Well, coming up to the end of the year, and it's time to take a look at the best and worst distros of 2012. So these are all the distros I reviewed over the year. In fact, there are only 20 of them. I'm quite surprised. I thought I had reviewed a lot more than that. But anyway, these were the 20 distros I reviewed. They were predominantly Ubuntu-based. So, in third place, with a score of 90%, it was Linux Lite version 1. So Linux Lite was a community-built distro by the folks at Linux Distro Community. They had put together what appeared at first glance to be a fairly plain, dull distro, but they had done a lot of little features to make it more user-friendly for a new Linux user, such as naming all the programs after the function they did, adding in a few terminal scripts that actually just got on and did the job and were probably a lot more friendly than a new user just typing in a command in the terminal, which may or may not have worked for them, but and including just about everything that the new user would need out of a Linux distro. In second place, also with a score of 90%, we have Ubuntu 12.04. So this was a long-term support release from Canonical, and for the first time, for the average desktop user, they were supporting it for five years. Okay, it was Unity Desktop again, and this is what I have here. So either love it or hate it. Well, I love it. Well, they didn't do many changes from Ubuntu 11.10, but what they did was did a little bit of a speed improvement, a lot of bug fixes, and as a result, the distro is pretty damn stable now. And in fact, as a bonus, we're now getting Steam being developed for Ubuntu 12.04. It'll work for some other distros, but, they're, but the predominant platform they're developing for is Ubuntu 12.04. And now let's look at the other end of the table before we go to the first result. So in 17th place, third from the bottom, we have XTix10. This was a GNOME-based distro that was sort of styled to look like Mac. But what they had failed to achieve here was much in the way of stability. And as a result, so there were a lot of bugs, there were a lot of stupid features that shouldn't have existed, like failing to hold your name from the install point to the actual operating system, made me give it a mark of 70%. Second from the bottom, in 19th place, much to the disgust of many people, was Linux Mint 14. Sure, they had done a lot of improvements on the user interface, both on the Cinnamon and Mate desktop, but what they had failed to do was build it on a decent, solid platform, because they had built it on Ubuntu 12.10, which had a rubbish kernel, and it was not just rubbish for me, it was rubbish for a lot of people. It was a well-known issue as they were developing it. They did nothing to solve it, and of course the unique way that Mint to do their updates, the kernel will never be fixed. Bit of a bad problem there. So that resulted in me giving it a score of 65%. And bottom of the barrel, no surprises here. In 20th place, we're also with a score of 65% is Ubuntu 12.10. What has to be the worst release of Ubuntu to date? Yes, as you heard, they already had a rubbish kernel. There was a lot of issues with stability, crashes. Weirdly, if they had stopped development about ooh, two, three weeks before final release, certainly in the beta 2 stage, they would have been a lot further up the table. And also with the unique problem of failing to include the kernel headers package for anyone installing the NVIDIA or AMD proprietary graphics drivers, it resulted in a blank desktop when you rebooted. Yes, Canonical, gotta hand it to you on that one. Clap, clap, clap. Slow applause for them. And it was even more damaging for their reputation with the release of Windows 8, right around here. And so anyone who didn't like Windows 8 thought, hmm, what's the alternative? Oh look, Ubuntu, let's download this. Oh, I'm not going near Ubuntu again. That's done a lot to damage Ubuntu. Anyway, enough of the bad news. In first place, with a score of 95%, we had Zorin OS 6 Ultimate. I love this distro for its looks changer. You could switch between XP, Windows 7, Mac, GNOME Classic, or Unity desktops, all quick and easily. It came with a decent selection of programs, and it just worked. It was great distro. So that's the list. Now, ones to look for next year. No, I'm actually putting only one on the list here, because I don't want to make this video too long. And that is Elementary OS. 
I'm absolutely impressed with that so far with it in VirtualBox. Obviously, the distro flies like no other distro has before. It makes Bode Linux look slow, and that's one of the lightest, fastest that I've used so far. And they've done a really good job of getting quite a few of the applications styled like each other, and styled with the with the operating system. So like the config button was on one side, it looked the same, you had the same styling with the buttons. It, it just looked fantastic what they had done. So I can't wait to see what that looks like. Hopefully they do release it in 2013. Let's hope there are lots of good distros to come in 2013. I shall endeavor to review a few more of them than I did uh, this year. But I shall leave you the list of the 20 that I did review. Uh, no, Happy New Year, and I shall see you all later.